Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how you can follow a line. Now following a line is a very useful tool to have. Many LEGO competitions have lines all across the board and you can use these lines to help guide your robot to where it needs to be. Now in order to follow a line, we have a color sensor. Now when installing your color sensor on your robot, you want to make sure your color sensor is not too close to the ground nor too high up because in both of those cases, it won't be able to read the color correctly. You want to have it a decent amount off the ground, around one stud high. Now, if you are using the building instructions for the education robot, using a piece such as this one will help lift up your color sensor just above the ground, adequate enough for you to do your programming. Now, if you are creating your own robot, I highly advise you try putting your color sensor in between the wheels or near the middle of your robot. The reason being is because, as we'll see later, having a color sensor up here works fine for straight lines, but it can lead to some problems when we get to corners. It can still follow the lines, but it's not as efficient as if it were in between the robots. So if you're building a custom robot, you should try to aim to put your color sensor in between the wheels, otherwise this will do just fine for straight lines. Now, to get started, I'm going to connect our robot to the laptop. Now, as we can see, we have our color sensor attached to one of the numbered ports. Let's change it to color. By default, it's usually reflected light intensity, but we want to do a color. Now, color has, now color, is pre-programmed with certain colors. It can detect certain colors like yellow, blue, black, red, green, and so on. I will put on the screen the colors and the color associations. But if you're programming and you ever forget what these colors are, you can go to this yellow tab, and then you can drag in a light sensor. After you drag in the light sensor, you can change it to compare color, and then press this first one. And as you can see, each number will show you the color it corresponds with. Now we're not going to be doing any programming with this yellow block. In fact, you can even keep it in your program and it won't really do anything. But I'm going to just keep it here so we can have a reference for the colors. Now before we start programming, let's talk about how we're going to follow a line. Now there are two ways to follow a line. First, we can follow the line on the outside edge or on the inside edge. If you follow the line on the outside edge, what we can do is we can have it so anytime it detects the outside of the line, it turns towards the line, and anytime it detects the inside of the line, it turns away from the line. So if I'm following the outside edge, then I will turn the left wheel every time it doesn't detect the line, and whenever it detects the line, I will turn the right wheel. And I would do this for the entire length of the line. And if I wanted to do it on the inside of the line, I would use the same process, just reverse uh, the which wheels are turning. So now let's connect our robot back to the laptop. Now before we start, we first need to see what color the line is and what color this surface is. So let's look at the line. The line is detected as 6 and 6 is white. So our line is being detected as white. Now our surface is be being detected as zero. Now zero is no color. Now you might expect it to detect blue, but sometimes some discrepancies can occur. For example, sometimes they might detect a dark blue as black or black as no color if it's too close. Oftentimes, if your color sensor is too close to the ground, it will detect no color and same if it's too high up. So for programming, we're going to use the surface as no color because that's what the color sensor is detecting. Now, to start, we're going to put a loop. Now, all a loop does is it simply loops, it repeats whatever's in between this block as many times as you want. Now, for now, we're going to have it go unlimited, and then we'll change this at the end. I'll show you how you can change it. But for now, we'll go unlimited. Now, what we want to do is we want to go forward. Now, we don't want to put it on for one rotation. The reason being, because then it will go one rotation before checking um, the color sensor. So instead I'm going to put it as on. Now since on simply means turn it on for a brief moment of time. Now since we're repeating this, it's just going to go straight forward. 
Next, after we, we have our robot going forward, we're going to put in an if block. Now, a, it, it's called a switch statement, which is also an if statement. Now, what an if statement does, it will check the condition over here and do something if it's true or false. Or it can do, in the case of a color sensor, do different things depending on the color it detects. So let's change the mode to color sensor. Measure color. Here we're going to measure the color and we're going to do different things depending on the color. Now you can always switch to a flat view or a tabbed view depending on whichever is easier. For now I'm going to switch to a tab view so we can see both cases. So our first case is when the robot detects white. And our second case is when the de robot detects no color. Now you'll notice that there's this little dot next to each case. Now this is called the default case, which basically means if it does not detect white and it does not detect no color, let's say it detects a color such as blue, then what should it do? It will do the default case. So I'm going to set the default case as no color, just in case if the color sensor detects the outside as blue. Now, if it detects white, if our color sensor detects white, I want to move this inside wheel. Now, this wheel for me is the C motor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag in this block. I'm going to set it to on. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my B motor to zero. So only my C motor is moving. Now what this will do is it will only turn the C motor and it will turn away from the line. Now if we do not detect this color, if we have zero, for example, I want it to do the opposite. So I'm going to do the same thing, but instead of setting my B motor to zero, I'm going to set my C motor to zero. And this is our line following program. Now, few words of caution. When you're putting in your color sensor, you want to make sure that your port is the correct port of the color sensor. If you have your robot plugged in, it should automatically uh, switch to the appropriate port, but it's always worth double checking, especially if you don't have your robot plugged in, because then it can be a different value. So you don't want to have a different port number, otherwise your program won't work at all. Next is that we have our program going at 50 speed. Now that's quite fast. If that's what you want, then you can leave it at that. But for demonstration purposes, I don't want it flying off screen. So I'm going to change all these values to 30. After we're done with our program, we can download it and run it. Now I'm just going to use this button which simply downloads and runs at the same time. So I'm going to take my robot and put it near the end and I'm going to download and run. As we can see, the robot followed the line just fine. It would turn to, towards the line anytime it would see it, and it would tr turn away from the line anytime it doesn't see it. Now I wanna show you what would happen if we would remove this block at the very beginning, which says go forward. The purpose of this block is to make everything go a little smoother. So if I were to remove this block and simply run the program with only the turning statements, it would still follow the lines, but it would be a lot jerkier. Let me show you. As you can see, as you can see, the robot still follows the line, but it moves side to side a lot more. It's much jerkier motion. Now, Adding that block at the very beginning, like we did, or you can add it afterwards, it really doesn't matter, simply helps smooth out the motion. Now let's discuss what would happen with a 90 degree turn. Let's run our current program. As you can see, it still followed the line up to this curve. And even after this point, after this sharp turn, it still attempted to turn, but because it was going forward as well, it went in a sort of a circle, right? Because we had this forward block. Now this forward block helped smooth out the motion on a straight line, but on a curved line, you can see how it kept moving in a circular fashion. 
This is one reason why you would want your motor to be closer to the center because it could help with that kind of motion. So let's try removing this block and see how it handles the turns. As you can see, even though the motion was jerkier, the turns was much better. It followed the line much more closely. Now here's something I wanted to show you. Let's say we were following the line on the inside, like this. As you can see, what happened is the robot was following the line, right? And when it got to this line, it wanted to turn. But as it turned, the color sensor came off the line and the robot detected it and thought it was supposed to go the other way. This is one of the problems with having your light sensor away from the center of rotation. If the color sensor was between the two wheels, then this problem wouldn't have been as pronounced. So that is one reason why if you want to deal with sharp corners, you should either change the program that you're using or you should have your color sensor in between. So now let's discuss how we can have a robot stop. So we don't want it to follow the line forever. We want it to eventually stop. So let me add back the forward motion at the beginning. And let's only talk about the straight line. Now, there are two options we can have. We can have it go on for a certain amount of seconds. For example, going from here to here, let's say I, I can time it and I can say it takes around five seconds. For example, if you want it to be more accurate, you would probably time it with a stopwatch. So I would take here and I would change the mode to time. Instead of unlimited, I change it to time. And time simply runs for a certain amount of seconds. So this is going to run for five seconds. So five seconds was a little too much. Let me try changing it down to two seconds. As you can see, it stopped after two seconds exactly. Now, if you wanted it to be more precise, you can go into decimals as well. That's one way to do it. The other way is to measure how much the motor moves. So I'm going to reset my motor. So I'm going to rotate my motor until B becomes zero. So that's pretty close to zero. Now I'm going to take my robot and I'm going to measure the change in this rotation. So I'm going to look at this number and I'm going to measure how much it changes. Now you could do what I did and change it to zero, or you can simply measure the beginning and end value and subtract them, whichever works best for you. So I will take my robot and I will drag it. I wanna try doing the same motion as moving back and forth. And then I will measure how much this value changes. So 796 degrees. So now I will change my mode to motor rotation degrees and I will say I want this loop to stop if it is greater than 796 degrees. You don't want to put equal because it won't be exactly equal. It, will, it might overshoot a little bit. So you want to say greater than 796 or greater than two or equal to. Now the reason I didn't drag the robot straight is because the robot does not move straight. It moves side to side, right? And every motion side to side adds a little more rotations to the wheel. And this isn't exactly going to be the most accurate, but it does help in getting you more or less to where you need. So let us try out how this program works now. As you can see, our B motor kept moving until it went beyond 796. Now, your motor values automatically reset to zero when you start the program, but they don't reset during the program. Let's say you wanted to use this kind of code multiple times in your program. 
how would you reset it? Well, first off, you could change the value depending on where you are. But another thing that you can do is you can reset the value. In order to do that, you go to your sensor value, you take in your motor rotation, and you can drag it right before this block. Now what you can do is you can change it to reset. And make sure you have the correct motor reset. This motor should be the same motor that you're using for your loop. Now what this will do is it will reset your motor value to zero. Now you obviously don't want to have this inside the loop. Otherwise it will reset every single time and you will never finish this loop. So you have it before the loop. And that way you can simply use this code again and reset the motor value and have the exact same code. So that is how we would use a color sensor to follow a line. Thank you for watching and I hope this video was helpful.